The Netherlands-based World Press Photo Competition has announced its winners for the best visual journalism of the past year. The winners captured some of the most powerful snapshots. Photographer Livan Olekai's story Valim Babena won for Story of the Year. Her portraits show people with dementia and the family members who care for them in Madagascar where the disease has little public awareness. Alejandro Segarra documented migrants at the northern border of Mexico for six years. Julia Kochitova's photographs of Ukrainians living through two years of war with Russia won the Open Format Award. But it was the work of Reuters photojournalist in Gaza, Mohammed Salem, which was awarded Photo of the Year. His image, taken just 10 days into Israel's war on Gaza, shows a woman named Inas Abu Mamar cradling the body of her niece, Sally. The little girl was killed by an Israeli missile attack on her home in Khan Yunus. Joanna Zain Khouri is executive director at the World Press Photo Foundation. She says photojournalism is a vital part of documenting conflicts around the world. Good to have you with us. Every conflict usually has an iconic photo. Is it fair to say, though, that in this conflict in Gaza, we've seen more iconic photos than usual? I don't know if you can say that we've seen more iconic photos than usual, but um, we definitely have seen a lot of photos. And a lot of photos, I think what is different is that we've seen a lot of photos coming from Palestinian photographers, especially from photographers who are from Gaza. And I think that is what makes them different this time, because, of course, there has been so much pressure on um, on press to be able to go and have access to Gaza. And that is why these images are so important today to be shown and to be to be shown all over the world. And related to that, those who do have access, Palestinian journalists in particular, they're paying an unprecedented price in this conflict for us just to see these pictures, right? Yes, I mean, um, there has been 97, as of yesterday, there have been 97 journalists who have been killed in only this Gaza-Israel uh, war, more than there has ever been in any other war, actually, at this point. And of course, most of them are Palestinians. And they don't only pay with their lives, but they also pay with their health and their mental health and uh, it is really really devastating there is pressure on press freedom all over the world but Gaza at this point is really a big case study of this pressure that exists around the world on press freedom can they take comfort in the thought that it hasn't been in vain have the photos and the videos been the key one of the key elements if not the key element that has really shaped public opinion more than ever yes. in this Gaza, in this yes. round of Gaza conflict. Absolutely. Today, photojournalists, especially photojournalists, really act as witnesses to what is happening around the world, especially and in Gaza specifically today. And when when I spoke to Muhammad Salem, telling him that he had one World Press photo, he told me that, you know, it was totally schizophrenic uh, experience because he was, of course, you know, we needed to find a place where he had Internet. He was in a shelter. Um, he was in Rafah at that point in time. He hadn't eaten in a couple of days. And um, and he was like, I just go out and I'm in a war zone. And here I am, you know, with having my dream come true, which is to become the photo of the year of World Press Photo. But um, he was very humbled by the fact that his image was going to be able to be seen by billions of people around the world. And that is the essence of the work that we do at World Press Photo, is to be able to give a new leg, to give a new life and increase that visibility to as many people as possible in order to be able to bring discussions to be able to bring some kind of solution and especially to be able to bring empathy and i think that is what's so special about this photo of the world this year uh, of the world press photo is that it is not you know a violent image it isn't a violent in the sense that there's blood it's a very um, individual image it's a very zoomed in image on this one woman with her niece 
um, whose faces you can't even see, but with whom you relate immediately on an emotional level to. And so it's not only today it's Gaza, but it's not only Gaza. This is the human impact and the human suffering that happens on wars and conflicts around the world. You know, the advent of television, radio may have taken or raised some question about the future of still photography or its impact and power. Has social media revived some of that power now? Well, in a way, I guess it has, but in a different way, in another way, I think that today you react to images in a very different way than the way that you used to. Today I was reading someplace the other day that um, on social media, people just spent not even a second, three quarters of a second looking at, at an image and, you know, even less time reacting to it. So basically this immediate, uh, immediacy, this urgency of people to feel, to react, et cetera, um, right. kind of work in polarizing, um, polarizing opinions. People. people don't think right. about this. Indeed. And uh, so it, it, it has a double, it has a, a double sword edge. All right. Thank you so much for yes. your thoughts on this. Thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.